Hey folks, we are back live on the Dev Twitch stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm a lead software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers Dev. Uh, today uh, we have uh, Dan Abramov, and I hope I said that right. Is it Abramov or Abra? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and uh, Maggie Appleton. Uh, thanks so much, both of you, for joining us today. I know uh, you're both probably super busy, so it's much appreciated. Um, before we get started, about talking about stuff. Uh, I wonder if maybe uh, for folks that might not know you, um, if you could just maybe introduce yourself, Maggie, and then Dan, you can go ahead. Sure. Um, so yes, hi, Maggie. Um, I'm uh, a designer, I suppose, and some really bad version of a developer. Um, and uh, I was the uh, illustrator designer on this project, just JavaScript with Dan, that we'll be talking about. Uh, and I currently yeah. work with a company called Hash that is working on essentially decision-making tools. So a lot of simulation and knowledge management stuff. Cool, cool. And how about yourself, Dan? Yeah, hi. Um, sorry, what was the question? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know, just, uh, yeah, just speak a yeah. bit about uh, what you've been up to or what you do. Uh, People might not yeah. know who you are, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I, I work on a JavaScript library called React um, as a team member. And I also uh, sometimes have my own projects. No, that's cool. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so why don't we get into it? Like, uh, we're definitely, I mean, the theme here is we def I definitely want to dig into the Just JavaScript course. Uh, I think it's an amazing course. I, I remember when it came out, it started off as emails, um, kind of like, I think it was like sections of the, the module every week. And then eventually I, I did purchase it. And uh, I don't know, I, I really just like how the whole learning for it works. Like it, it works with my brain. So I definitely want to dig into, I guess, first off, like how did the, uh, course come about was it something like like i know you've been doing javascript for a while dan was it something to kind of scratch a niche like you know maybe like i i know javascript but i just you know there's stuff that i can't fully explain and that's why this came about or, or just curious what the thought process was yeah it's actually been a while so i don't know if my recollection is still <laughs> uh is still real or if I'm making up a backstory for it, which is like highly plausible. <laughs> um, I think I talked to a few people about it like for a while before trying to do it, but um, maybe it helps to first kind of explain, you know, why it's different because there there's a lot of JavaScript courses out yeah. there, right? Um, and in, And programming courses in general, but I think one thing that, um, like one thing that I've noticed uh, in, I guess in my own learning experience is just that, um, and then later after doing the course, I actually learned that it's something that's uh, that's actually been researched. So it's oh okay cool. Uh, it's it's not just I did not make it up, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people even experienced programmers, or at least people who have been programming for, for a while, right? Like maybe like three years, four years, uh, especially like one year and two years, um, they don't read the code correctly. And that that is a very strong statement to make. Like, I don't mean it as a, uh, oh, like you're doing it wrong kind of thing. Okay. Um, but just that, um, Code is not prose. It's not, uh, you know, like English sentences, but yeah. it's kind of designed to sort of look like prose, and that is that is intentional, right? It's like a way for us to tell the story of what we want the computer to be doing. Uh, yeah. But the computer doesn't care about the story. The computer just cares about, you know, the exact shape of the code. And there are many misconceptions about uh, both in JavaScript and in general programming. Mm -hmm. about the most basic things like uh what does assignment to you uh what does it mean to pass an argument to a function uh like what does it mean to like copy something and so on and uh these like the meanings of like what does it mean to do something it's also yeah. different between languages and sometimes in very significant ways and like you might be coming from one language and you have an assumption 
about how that works and then you try a different language and it works somewhat differently yeah. and I just found that it's actually um so there, there are ways to kind of uh you know like be well I think as I uh as I learned JavaScript myself like with time yeah. it took me some time to get you know like pretty good at it to the point that if I read the code I have a good sense of what's going to happen. Like I have a good sense of what it's doing. Yeah. And I kind of think of it as a mental model, similar to how um, if I, because I've used the like iPhone a lot, I can mm -hmm. kind of imagine it. And I can imagine like, if I want to open a new tab in Safari, like I press the Safari button, like this thing appears, I press the, you know, the, the button in the bottom right corner, like I press plus. Yeah. I, so like I have this picture of how the system responds to me, but yeah. the problem with learning the same for code is that uh, you don't have any kind of visual feedback, like you don't see mm -hmm. the state of the system, because in uh, like when you write code and when you execute code, the computer has a certain state of the system inside of it that is completely yeah. opaque to you, you don't see it, you only kind of get things out of it. And so what I wanted to see is like, can we make a course that would uh, that would visualize the actual state of the system, which is okay. not the same thing as what really happens in the computer. It's more mm -hmm. about like, what is the model? What is the, mo the simplest model that can visually show what is happening and that you yeah. can kind of train yourself to like see. And, and that was... I think that was the idea and it took some time. Like I thought maybe it's a silly idea, but then I kind of tried developing it a little bit. And after a while it kind of came together. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, I I like what you said about the mental models because I've been doing JavaScript for a while too. And I, I feel like I'm decent at it. I never say I'm an expert in anything, but uh, but I remember when I started the course and like, automatically I was just going to I, I wasn't visualizing it with the mental models that you're talking about I'm like okay so okay I changed that variable and now it's this and this and then like I had to almost uh, no pun intended because you talk about wires in it but I had to rewire my brain to to think the court rethink how to do the course you know and and I and I only mention this because I think even for folks that have been doing JavaScript for a while, it's still beneficial to go through this process because, you know, it's, it's you know, the more you're able to concretely explain something, obviously the, the, the better you get at, but uh, it's like, I don't know, I've, I've found in, in my own experience, you know, you'll have these gaps. So it's like, you know, you onboard somebody and they start asking you about, oh, how's this work? And then you're like, well, it's this, this, and then oh uh yeah that yeah i have no idea i just always thought it was some magic box that did something or you know so it's i i just like the the kind of retraining of your brain to learn things yeah, not not to sound too far out there but uh uh it it really spoke to me and and this kind of ties into where you come into maggie as well because a lot of this is visual and uh i'm sure i'm not the only one but i'm a big fan of all your artwork so it it seemed like it just paired really really well with this so I don't know if you want to maybe speak about how you came to well I know you knew Dan before because of Egghead I think but you uh yeah I guess kind of how did your whole part come together for this sure um yeah so I don't uh know what year it was because I've lost all track of time in any like reasonable way <laughs> um but at some point in the past um uh, I yeah knew Dan where I used to work at um, Egghead where I was a designer and art director there um and Dan had made a bunch of uh, React courses and Redux courses so I kind of vaguely knew each other as internet people um and then right. um <laughs> finally met um, met up for coffee and, and Dan told me about the concept of of what became just JavaScript at the time was an idea of a way we might explain certain things in JavaScript. And it got me really excited because uh, we just, I don't know, shared a lot of the same like interests and references in terms of visualizing programming, mental models. I mean, I know early on we talked about, I have this book I love called Metaphors We Live By by George Lakoff and Mark yeah. Johnson. That's all about how everything we think about and do in the world is metaphorical, including things like programming. And that's a huge 
factor in how we understand and conceptualize things. We talked about Mindstorms yeah. by Sewell Paper, which is like this canonical book about teaching children with computers, but teaching anyone with computers and how to like create interactive systems that are meaningful and play into like natural human abilities, like space and vision, which are kind of the core tools we use to get around in the world. Like we are very, very visual creatures yeah. and everything we do is based in our understanding of embodiment. So be having, you know, ups and downs and fronts and backs and lefts and rights, including programming. We like project that onto the machine when we're programming. So that was a long winded way of saying that <laughs> when Dan explained the concept to me, I was like, oh yeah, I love all these themes. Like I'm really interested in trying to create a system that helps explain JavaScript through visuals. Like that got me really excited. Um, at the time I knew very little JavaScript. Like I knew the kind of JavaScript where I wanted to like make cool animations happen. So I would like copy and paste certain lines in certain orders and then just like try to change things until it worked. I had absolutely no grounding in computer science or very little understanding of core programming concepts like assigning variables or like passing objects or anything of that sort. So I yeah. was the original guinea pig for the course material. <laughs> like I like didn't really understand a lot of the core um, concepts. So it was like, we would just sit in coffee shops with a piece of paper and Dan would draw little diagrams and I would try to like make it or you'd write code. And then I would have to like try and draw diagrams that matched up with it. We kind of did that back and forth for a while okay. until we found like a visual language that helped represent things in a way that like matched the way JavaScript behaves and didn't cause more confusion than clarity essentially. Yeah, no, for sure. It's like, I, m I remember when I started JavaScript uh, a long time ago, but I, I remember I, I couldn't wrap my head around the, the concept of closures. And I, I, I have this vivid memory of, I, I don't remember what the code was doing, but it was a set timeout to do something after a certain amount of time. And I didn't know how to get these variables in that function that I, you know, that are available in because of the closure. But I, I did, this is when like eval, there's an eval function. And I was like literally building this string to build a function and like taking the values out of the variables. And like, I look back at it now, I'm like, what were you doing? But like at the time it's like, I, my brain just didn't understand. And that's like the best way I could do it. And it's, uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting how he folks uh, tackle things i guess but uh what do you th what do you think i mean i'm a fan of javascript i'm a, i don't know if you are a fan of javascript dan i i know you you write a lot of it but uh, i'm curious what you th like uh things you think that people have problems grasping and like obviously the course deals with these but like what are like some big lines for you that you think that people have a hard time getting by yeah, I, I do. I do actually uh, like JavaScript as uh, kind of as flawed as it is. I I do enjoy it. I, I think it's yeah, no same. I wouldn't say it's a I wouldn't say it's a good language, but it is. There's it's it's a charming language. I think on some level. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, it's. Well, the thing is, like with gaps, uh, like definitely, like for example, closures is one of the mm -hmm. things. I think it's interesting because I don't think people actually struggle with closures much. I think they think that they struggle with closures because whenever you try to describe the concept itself, it kind of sounds very convoluted. Whereas actually, yeah. like you use closures every day, all the time when you're writing code, and you don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a shame, like we didn't actually get the closures in the course. Um, although we do have kind of the foundation to get there, but uh, mm -hmm. we cut the scope because otherwise we, we just never ship, you know, the, the first version. So we kind of cut it, okay. cut it out that the prototypes, and then if we do another season later, that, that will definitely include closures. Um, but uh, but it's I thought it's interesting that for you know things that people like in my experience that people struggle with, mm -hmm. um, and again I'm I'm mostly talking about like I think like the audience for the course is people who know enough JavaScript to get by like maybe people who went through a bootcamp or a self learning course or 
like they just got their first JavaScript job um, or, yeah. you know, they've been maybe doing some hobby projects. So they, they can get around the language, mm -hmm. uh, but they just feel like anxious uh, because when there is a bug, they're like not sure, like the code seems fine. Why is it doing this other thing that I intended? Uh, yeah. You know, in, it's just they, they don't know, like, they just can't explain why some things are wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed like in my, uh, in my experience, it's usually much simpler things. It, it's not any advanced concepts. Like surely okay. there are like things like this in JavaScript that are, yeah. I think, unintuitive, but it's kind of a gotcha. And it's not, I don't think it's, you know, like if you do learn how it works, you know how it works. You know, like it's yeah, uh, it's easier to say if you know it or not. It is, uh, it's something that you kind of uh, know that you know it or you don't know it. But I think the much harder ones are when you don't know that you don't know something, and yeah. that creeps into the most basic operations. So I think even things like what does it mean to create an object? Uh, what does it mean to assign something to a variable? What does A equals B actually mean? What does yeah. it mean to access a property like object dot something? Uh, what does it mean when that stands on the left side or on the right side and so on? I think these are the most basic things that people tend to, um, they kind of tend to, guess what it means or like think about it intuitively by again reading code as as prose um yeah. but then this doesn't necessarily correspond to how it actually works and then the other flaw is when people also don't have a good um mental model of how the code executes in general so for okay. example i I've, i did like a few workshops with people just to kind of see like where the mistakes are and one thing i've noticed is sometimes uh if someone is trying to determine like a value of some variable uh that, that is like declared you know that that is used like on line 10 and they kind of start tracing the code upwards like oh this is from here and this is just here but it's not yeah. safe because there could have been stuff in the middle that changed it so you actually have to even though you kind of look for clues upwards, you still have to read the code downwards. Yeah. And this, like, there are all these kind of intuitions about what is okay to do in your head that are completely wrong if you don't know how the code executes. And so this is why we also, like, in the course, we pay a lot of attention to, like, no, read the code, like, one, one line by one line. There is no shortcut. <laughs> you can't skip over <laughs> yeah. lines and hope that you will correctly interpret it. And that's why there is so much emphasis also on we kind of force you to draw. Uh, and I think the visualization aspect is not even, um, you know, we, the course, like some, somebody reached out to me and said, you know, I don't know if this course is going to work for me because I can't like visualize things in my head. And the thing is yeah. that I can't either. Like the most <laughs> I can visualize is like, you asked me to imagine a picture of a, uh, like a, a sunny beach. Like I, yeah. I, I can just imagine like blue and like another shade of blue, maybe a, a bit of like yellow. And that's that's about the extent of like my visual, like my mind's eye power. So it's not really about always imagining things. It's more that uh, the graphical way is just a mm -hmm. shortcut to teach you the mechanics of how it works. And then the thing okay. that you carry away is the mechanics, not the not the visuals. But anyway, this is this is why there's so much emphasis on like, okay, after this line, draw what happens. Yeah. After this line, draw what happens. Because it teaches yeah. you that there is some kind of a you know state of the machine that exists somewhere that you can't see. But yeah. each line it it changes the state the machine is in. And you, this is the thing you kind of need to like you need to become the machine and learn to interpret like instructions as this changes yeah. through it and then and then you will get good at like reading the code and debugging cool cool um there's a question um, in the i chat. want to jump in on that point about oh is there oh, no, no, go <laughs> ahead, like, you finish going it. off that thing because i wanted to make the point about I, I love when people come and they're like um either they say hey i'm a, I'm a visual learner 
or B, I'm not a yeah. visual person. And like people make up categories for themselves in their heads that like I'm not a visual person because they can't draw as in like they can't make the shapes they want to on paper. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And and I, I completely understand why people come with that, with those labels. Like we get them from like really like junk cultural articles or like pop science a lot that there are visual and non-visual people. Um, yeah. But the visualization part of it uh, like is more, I think about embodiment and doing things with objects, which is like, any human with eyes and a body like does that like from birth <laughs> to now, like you like pick up yeah, coffee yeah. cups and you like put things into other things. And when we're getting you to draw in just JavaScript or in any thing where you're learning and trying to understand something and you're drawing boxes and arrows and circles, you are mimicking the way you would manipulate physical objects in the world. And like, there is no human on earth that is not exceptionally skilled in that. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it's just projecting that into a digital space. So it's just one of those where like, I don't quite know how to explain it in like, sophisticated words yet but I want to try to figure out how to divorce people from the concept of drawing things on paper from like working with visuals because <laughs> to me it's okay, so yeah, much yeah. more about embodiment and objects yeah yeah and and uh, I'll, I'll share some some screens from the course uh, soon um but I I know what you mean too and I like because you have uh for folks who don't know there's an amazing project called Excaladraw uh I think it's from is it Veju? I know he's from France. Uh, I think that's his handle on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, it's an amazing project. It's not just him. There's other folks that have contributed and you have those embedded in. So in terms of the uh, I can't draw aspect, even if you can't really draw, it, like it has all the shapes and the arrows. So it's like, it, you know, it just makes it pretty accessible even if you air quote can't visualize. Um, but uh, before, yeah, before we maybe talk a bit further about that, there was a question. It's for you, Maggie. It says, uh, as the first guinea pig of the course, what were some aha moments on the understanding of JavaScript for you, if any? Ho hopefully there was one. But Oh, gosh, there were definitely some, but it's been so long ago. And my brain is so melted after the last year that I'm not even <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I forget if did we get into this keyword in the course? I forget what we kept in and out because we like, developed a bunch of material. Ah, we got it. We, we, we didn't. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that was yeah. Okay, I had some ahas in that. Anyway, um, <laughs> just pretend that doesn't exist because otherwise people will want the course material. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely reassignment um, was one I didn't have much concept of. I mean, honestly, just the idea of variable assignment in the first place. Like I mentioned that I didn't come in with a computer science background, and I I think most people in the JavaScript community haven't either like any sort of formal yeah. education where they sort of run you through the basic concepts of computing and like the history of programming languages from the ground up. I think almost no one has that. Um, yeah. So I assume most people don't have an understanding of this thing of creating like objects in computer memory and like pointing to them and reassigning them and like, re not that you do re memory reallocation in JavaScript, but just that idea of like changing what something's pointing to you and like tracing that back mm -hmm. through the code working through the animations for those it made me understand so much more how to understand when something is undefined and you can't figure out why it like gave me very much that process of being able to trace that back okay yeah cool cool thanks for sharing um yeah i'll go ahead and if you don't mind i'll share uh i'll open up the first chapter or the first module the mental models is that okay and uh yeah. i'll just share that with folks just give me a sec here to talk to you all right, uh, and both of you should see it, and folks on the stream should see it in a second here. Um, so, yeah, so one, I, I like the aesthetic as well. That's a side note, but um, I, 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 I'm always terrible at picking fonts for, <laughs> for things. It's like I do front end, but uh, the designers always, uh, they just help there. Um, I should mention yeah, so, um, the designer on the UI here is uh, Wojtaholic. He currently works at Egghead. He's also like a front end oh, okay. developer, but he picked all the design and fonts and he's exceptionally good at like aesthetic, <laughs> simple oh, interfaces. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. It's on my other screen. But um, so yeah, in the first module, you talk about the mental models that you, that you were mentioning there at the beginning, Dan. Uh, Dan. And if there's this concept of, I think it's in the first chapter, the wiring. Let me just scroll down. Uh, where is it? Uh, oh, I guess it's the next one. Uh, it's in the JavaScript universe, maybe. Well, I guess maybe we could talk about. Well, I don't, I don't think we get to. Yeah, I, th I think we get to 
we're gonna build the, the third one the model about yeah it's probably the third one because okay, we first okay. introduced the concepts of like what is a variable what is a value and then we kind of i think the second okay, chapter yeah. that just deals with values yeah that's know, right oh yeah you're it right doesn't talk about variables yeah. Yeah, shout out to the the, the, the Pitsy Pranks. Um, but yeah, okay, let's go to chapter th three, uh, module three, like you said. So yeah, now you were talking about, uh, well, there's primitive values in JavaScript, but there's, where is it? I guess we can maybe start here. You're talking about the primitives, but I just, I'm trying to find the wires because it's, uh, it's, I just like the whole, oh, here we go. So it, this is what you were talking about, Maggie, about like assigning to a variable and stuff and how you had to wrap your brain around that a bit. Um, so like you can see already here, here's the wires and like, like when, when you, when you went with the wires approach was it's not, was this, were you treating it kind of like a pointer or were you really trying to forget that whole concept of pointer and just stick to the, you know, like this is some variable and it's just a value and this is just a connector like not not really going because you, you try to stay away from the lower level stuff uh so yeah yeah that's yeah. pretty intentional and uh yeah we don't uh, like you use this word pointer but like it's not a term that's familiar to our readers because it assumes yeah uh yeah so it's it's kind of bring in like baggage from that's exactly the thing that we're trying to avoid. Like we don't want to bring the baggage from other languages because then it just, like we just pretend that other languages don't exist and we kind of describe yeah. JavaScript as if that was the only thing that that, that is there. Um, but it is a pretty intentional choice um, and somewhat controversial, uh, I should say, the, because okay. usually variables are visualized as, um, it's kind of a table where, or it's kind of like memory slots, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, usually draw a table, you say like variable A, and then inside the cell, you say like, it's like four and like variable B is like, like five and you just update the yeah. values in the cells. And I pretty intentionally did not do that. And instead I went with the approach where uh, all values exist kind of you know, as separate things in space okay. and you, you point to them. And the reason for this is because it is, ju I, I just think it's simpler because as soon as you introduce objects, you can't, uh, you can't really use the table approach anyway, because yeah. two variables can point to the same object and objects can have properties and those can also point at objects. So like you have to still introduce this concept of like pointing at something and if you have to introduce it anyway, why not use it for everything? Because I think it's just, it just makes it more natural. And uh, it, it also lets us later explain what what it means for two values to be the same, like what, what it means for things to be equal. Well, it's just when the thing, <laughs> when you have only one value. Um, yeah. I'm trying to condense like three chapters into five sentences. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, We're doing all the course line that, in an hour and a half. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying like this, uh, this, this is a really, uh, this is a somewhat controversial decision that I really strongly stand by. I think that is, I think that is just the correct way to teach JavaScript. And I think that the, I don't like the other ways personally, even though they, they can work. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. And I just want to get to the wire. So like, yeah, so I, I, I like, th this ties into here, if we go to, this is the concept of the wires and and I, I really do like that, you know, when I started reading, it, I was like, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll just skip the exercise, you know, but then, you know, like it's written intentionally. No, really do the exercise. And, you know, even if even if you already understand it, I still found it a useful exercise to do uh, just because it's hard to rewire your brain when you're trying to rethink something. So. So uh, I definitely uh, appreciate having to go through them. Obviously, people can skip them, but uh, um, where was it? Nitpicking. No, there's yeah. So so here's for example, just like these are throughout the course. So this is a embedded Excalibur. So like you know, you're doing stuff like I'm gonna make a variable and like connect it and stuff. And it 
when I first did it, I, I felt a little silly at first because I'm like, I know what I'm doing, but it, it did really help solidify things I found. So, like, and, and there's this whole concept, uh, I'll just stop sharing for a second here. Um, just the whole concept too of like the JavaScript universe that you talk about. Like, I, I don't want to give away the whole course, obviously, but, but like, uh, you know, just, just like there's these, things floating in space that you can you know like they're far away but then there's closer things that you can manipulate and like i don't know it's it's just uh i don't know i just thought it's just a really neat way to kind of grasp these concepts so i i think folks will enjoy it um there was another question in the chat or actually two um this one's from at cat you i'm probably getting that handle wrong but uh i'm curious what you all think is a powerful js concept that is commonly misunderstood or underutilized we talked about this briefly but uh is there anything else you think that uh folks really uh misunderstand or, or underutilize I don't know about like underutilized, but I think I mentioned some yeah. of the things people misunderstand. Uh, I think maybe one yeah. of one of the big ones is that, uh, well, again, the, the code you see on the screen does not correspond to what's happening, you know, the, the state of the system. So I like, guess one yeah. example of this is, uh, I think of objects, such a basic idea, mm -hmm. right? Like objects and especially in code uh you would often see nested objects so you would see like yeah an object that has like an object inside of it and that's actually like a wrong way to think about objects so like in, in if you look from the perspective of like the state of this system like what, what actually happens uh when you try to like debug code or like understand what it's doing if you imagine mm -hmm. objects as nested you're going to have mistakes. Objects are never nested. That's just not a thing. But in the yeah. code, they can appear nested. And so this is an example yeah. of where, like, if you read code as, as you know, as prose, you're going to mess it up. Like, you, you need to think a bit yeah. differently. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Because, like, even when, like, if, if you look at, like, the developer tooling, like, if you open up your, your console and the debugger, and you you have an object and then you just have all these triangle arrows to open up open up so it it really does think you know it's like a babushka doll almost but it's but it's not um but yeah and i guess that's yeah i, I mean it's it's like that obviously to to be able to drill down into things but it, you're right it does give the misconception it is just one object that may happen to contain another object i guess but uh um okay we got i got a few questions here just well even the word even the word contain, contain is kind of <laughs> yeah a problem here right because it yeah. implies that one thing is inside the other but really yeah. it's not because you could have the other thing also inside of this one so the word contains is just it just doesn't work in this context so that's yeah, why we yeah, say like true. it points <laughs> at this object yeah. it's yeah, funny the syntax no, is sure. actively misleading i mean we could like rant forever about like the flaws of current like develop a tooling and programming interfaces and all of that but but like genuinely yeah. it's just like actively misleading in the way we currently write syntax <laughs> yeah i don't know it'd be it'd be kind of interesting to see if somebody did a fresh take on like developer tooling you know like if they kind of went you know like if, maybe if they went like the javascript universe kind of way like it'd be i'd be curious to see you know like different different tooling uh, based on like visualization it could be could be interesting I don't know if that'll happen anytime soon, but uh, um, yeah. Uh, what was the other question here? Oh, uh, Brittany Postma was saying uh, you all crushed it on this course. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what she said. Um, somebody's saying, for me, visualizations of how code works really helps things to truly click the first visualization that made me understand the loop was this one okay they're just pointing to a, a link uh, yeah uh, there's some other message but it was modded for sexual content so I have no idea what that was um, yeah <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, what uh, somebody did have another question because you talked about like a, another season of the course 
uh, they were wondering, like, would you tackle stuff like functional programming, for example, or is that something you don't really want to get into with this type of course or? I, I just don't know what that means. Like there are so many ways you can interpret it, but in general, okay. it's a course about the language. It's not a course about like paradigms or techniques. So I don't think mm -hmm. functional programming would be there because it is a technique. It is not, it is yeah. not a language by, by itself. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Uh, don't think I have any other questions at the moment. I'm just going to go through the chat here because uh, a bunch of them piled in. Uh, just some folks saying hello. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's no other questions at the moment. Um, I, I guess, what am I trying to think here? My 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 brain went blank the, as well. Um, is there? I'm curious if there's any other things related to JavaScript that you maybe want to talk about now, or we can even we can even move on to something else. Like we we always go on tangents. I know. Yeah, uh, when we had Maggie on uh, a while ago, uh, you were talking about digital gardening and anthropology, and uh, those things are super interesting. Um, but I don't know if there was uh, anything else about the course. I, I've, I've drawn a blank in terms of uh, more questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't really. I don't. I don't know. I don't have anything in particular. Like, check out the course. Buy it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Give me your money. Um, I don't know, but we we, we do have rain. refunds. So if if you don't like it, you can ask for a free refund. But. We can move cool. on to other topics. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's another question here, but yeah, they're just uh, asking how deep it goes in a JavaScript APIs. But again, like like Dan was saying before, it's really more concepts about the language. It's not necessarily digging into like you know uh, web workers or stuff like that. That's there's other courses for stuff like that. I think. Um, I guess. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty squarely in kind of language fundamentals. So we don't even go to, we don't even cover some of the, uh, like we don't even go into functions much. Although like okay. functions are pretty important. There's a bunch of things we could do there and we probably should in like season two. So it yeah. is, again, it, it is focused on very fundamentals. But again, like mm -hmm. the funny thing is like, I, I still do get emails from people saying like, oh, I've been writing JavaScript for like five years, like seven years and I found something new here or like this way yeah. of thinking has helped me, you know, catch a bunch of bugs or like past interview or whatever. So don't overestimate, you know, how <laughs> how good, yeah. Like, yeah. don't overestimate how well the model that you have organically has worked for you. And yeah. like, I think even though we're, we mostly cover the most basic things, just like having another way to look at them can be beneficial, like regardless of how much time you spend to, you know, doing it your own way. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Because oh, well, the good. strange thing is, like, everyone already has a mental model in their head of how they think JavaScript works, or of any like interface, <laughs> right? And like, this mm -hmm. is like the the challenge of good interface design is getting um, what's presented to the user to match what's in their head, or match. I mean, the way the system works to match what's in their head, and getting those models aligned yeah. is actually something that's talked about a ton in fields like HCI, which is hum human computer interaction, which is kind of like this weird developer designer like yeah. academic fantasy land um, where they do interesting stuff, but it doesn't like trickle down into the industry. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of the course was just like trying to correct where people already have existing models of what they've built up from like, you know, a whole array of tutorials written by all kinds of different people using all kinds of different metaphors, um, explaining things in different ways. And you get like a hodgepodge <laughs> model in your head that doesn't add up to a whole. And because you've never actively thought about it, you've never kind of filled in the mistakes. Um, and because the course starts with like a very, I mean, we started from the basics of building up a mental model from the ground up um, and hopefully mm -hmm. like it fills in a lot of those gaps. Cool, cool. Yeah, also um, that this like, there's a lot of just like plainly misleading and wrong information that is shared extremely widely. Like there are okay. medium articles that just say things that categorically aren't true at all. And they have mm -hmm. like 10,000 likes and stuff like this. 
yeah. like one, one, box, one of my it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah what well, one, one of my personal like pet peeves is this by value versus by reference which okay. is like 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 people say oh this is passed by value this is passed by reference which is kind of a misleading way to talk about how things work in javascript like this concept does yeah. exist in some languages it means mm -hmm. a different thing from what people think it means and it's just not like i don't i don't find it i find it at best uh, you know slightly misleading and at worst just like plainly a wrong way to think about how it works but it is yeah. one of the most common things that people learn when they start learning the language is that some things are passed by valley some are by reference yeah so yeah we don't do that we don't yeah, have no, it's like that doesn't even exist in the spec yeah no i yeah and i i guess if, if you're coming from other like like i did a lot of c sharp before so like those concepts are there and and so like i i could see you know uh, why people might, yeah, bring that baggage with them, I guess, uh, so to speak. Um, but yeah, uh, there was, okay, there's a couple more questions. Um, Becca was wondering, and sh uh, you spoke to, to this a bit, but what was your favorite part of the course creation, like for both of you? Uh, you kind of, I think you kind of alluded this, like talking about the coffee shop and just, just hanging out. Um, but uh, I don't know if there's anything else there. I know my, I don't know if it was, well, it was like over the course of making the course in the language, um, over the yeah. like course of us working on this, uh, it got me to do, I mean, I like researching things anyway, but it definitely sent me down uh, researching the rabbit hole of, well, visual programming, like, and the history of it in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of the history of trying to develop interfaces for programming. Because although we made a course that like has illustrations, uh, ideally what we could have done, like in a world where we have like infinite developer capacity and no day jobs and like all the time in the world, is like develop mm -hmm. an interactive system where people can like click and like, you know, connect things themselves and the code changes on the side and some like wild interactive thing. Uh, and I think we get yeah. the same concepts across with animation and images and words. So it, it works fine, but um, like there have been a lot of really, really interesting and wonderful historical attempts to make programming interfaces um, more visual and by visual, not like, you know, drawing, but embodied yeah. objects being moved around in space, you know, and all that stuff I talked about. <laughs> um, and yeah, it sent yeah, me yeah. down a really like wonderful deep rabbit hole that I'm still in. Um, and yeah, it was just a really good project to, to kind of launch into that history. Yeah. It makes me think of like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie in the Minority Report or whatever, you know, but just moving things around and like, I wonder if we'll get there at one point, like programming things like, oh yeah, I need this, you know, just pop that there and connect it all together and do fancy things with your hands and all of a sudden you got a web app going, but uh, yeah, cool, cool. Um, what, yeah, oh, I think what was your favorite part, Dan? <laughs> yeah, I think for me, like, uh i don't know I, um i i don't i both like and don't like creative projects it's it's kind of agonizing to work on something uh yeah so it's like i think the parts that i like are also the parts that i disliked um but i think it was fun to release it like the way we did which was just like first like weekly and then it became too hard and it was like bi-weekly or for, fortnightly i don't know how to say that and yeah. and then it was like once in a few months but eventually we did kind of finish those emails and it was interesting because there was like there was this email list it was free and yeah. it was just a like growing and growing and we got like 100k members uh and it was fun to like see what people you know like people actually responding to emails and some people were saying no like this doesn't work for me this is so silly i've been programming 15 years you don't know anything and some people were like mm -hmm. wow this is like super helpful like i was never taught like this and now you know like now i see it in a whole different perspective so many things click for me so it's just nice to get this kind of real-time feedback from like actual people studying that that was that was interesting i think uh and, yeah. and i kind of enjoyed that 
Oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, Hash Heap in the chat saying, uh, uh, I don't know if either of you have ever used Scratch, but he, he uh, they're saying, I wish I was introduced to programming with Scratch. It's, uh, I, I've, I've used it, my, both my kids have used it, and it's, it's a pretty cool way to, to visually build things, but uh, I, I, it looks like you've seen that before, Maggie, or? Yeah, yeah, I think Scratch is maybe one of the more famous ones, I suppose, and I know it's built uh, yeah. pretty directly off like Seymour paper, it's ideas in, in Mindstorms. Um, okay. It's really great, it's strange that, I mean, you know, it's framed as like a children's programming language, but um, it's pretty extensive. There's like also one called WorfJS, which is a JavaScript implementation of the Scratch interface. Um, okay. And there's another one that's fairly new, but kind of, it's not exactly like Scratch, but along similar lines called natto.dev. And it allows you to draw boxes and put like little functions or objects in them and then draw oh, physical okay. lines that pass expressions between them. And so it's very much that same sort of like trying to visualize and see on a on a canvas where you can move in four directions, okay. um, how things move between objects and functions and um, in JavaScript, it's pretty good. Cool, 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 awesome. All right. Well, uh, I don't think I have any more questions for you. And the, the chat seems to have uh, depleted uh, questions. Um, I don't know if there was uh, anything else you wanted to maybe touch on, but if not, uh, we can we can also wrap it up. Either way, uh, I'm I'm happy to keep chatting. Obviously, but uh, I don't know. We could talk about Encanto if you want to or something, <laughs> which is a good movie, by the way. Um, but yeah. Um, but if not, yeah, uh, it's, it's up to both of you. Uh, I know you both have a busy schedule too. I'm sure, so. cool, cool. I haven't seen Encanto, so I can't chime in on that one. <laughs> okay. Well, it's got a good soundtrack, uh, and it's a good movie, but cool, cool. Uh, well, you know, I guess, why don't we call it there then maybe, you know, we'll go out on a Encanto note. Um, just wanted to say thanks again so much for both of you for joining us today uh, or joining me sorry I'm, I'm used to having a co-host um and yeah i'm gonna drop a link to the course again folks check it out if you haven't already it's it's really great you won't regret it and if you want to give dan or maggie a follow i dropped a couple links there for you and there's also if you want to check out the dev stream with maggie uh, i dropped that link too and yeah, next week, uh, Sunil Pai from Cloudflare is joining us. We're going to talk about all things Cloudflare. I barely know anything in that space, so I'm excited to just learn some stuff from Sunil. So tune in for that. Uh, thanks again, Dan and Maggie, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks for having me.